The frame I've chosen is the Segan X140. Uh, it's a very nice frame, obviously well thought out, uh, but very tight in terms of room for your components. Um, we started with the PDB. It goes here on the bottom, and I just soldered the XT60 connector onto it, and then mounted it to the bottom plate with this 3D printed uh, part here, right? The only wires I run from the, the PDB on the bottom up to the top area are the wires for the ESCs, the power and ground. So I've got two for each ESC here. Next I took the satellite receiver and I dropped it on the PDB through the hole in the main plate. So it's going to sit sandwiched between the PDB and the flight controller which will go down on top of it. I took the receiver antenna wires and ran them out through the battery strap slots and through the holes in the 3D printed part. If you've got a receiver with longer antenna wires, you're going to want to use the antenna straws and secure them into those holes. Alright, so at that point I threw the motors on and then uh, stuck down my ESCs with the double sided tape and then got those all soldered up. I took the wires that I ran up from the PDB and soldered those onto the power and ground terminals for each ESC. All right, And I used those power and ground terminals off the ESC to pretty much power everything else that I needed rather than running them you know, to the, off of the PDB and having a bunch of wires coming up from the bottom. I really like the Omnibus all-in-one flight controller because of all the features that come built in. With a build this tight, you really can't afford to have a separate OSD board, a current sensor board, and a memory card reader. There's just not enough room. Some of the features over the regular Omnibus uh, that they've added are the barometer, the current sensor, and one of the things I'm most excited about is the memory card slot. I don't know if you've ever tried to export your black box data off of your flight controller, but it takes forever. Now I can just pop out the memory card, throw it in the MacBook, and I'm good to go. On this flight controller, the USB and the memory card reader are slightly off-center, so I went ahead and trimmed the 3D printed skirt so those would be accessible once the quad is all buttoned up. Okay, so once the flight controller is in place, I went ahead and powered the board off of the main, uh, main battery pads here right on the board. It can take up to 6S, and uh, again, I powered those off of the uh, power and ground terminals of one of my ESCs. It's important to use those main pads to power the board. You can also power it off of the um, the power, the positive 5 volt terminal on the ESC uh, ports. But if you want to take advantage of the current sensor, you need to uh, have it connected to the battery terminal on the board. After I had the board powered and made sure it was working, I went ahead and took all my ESC uh, signal and ground wires and went ahead and soldered them to the ports. I'll put up the flight controller pin out and show you exactly how I soldered those up. Uh, it is important that they don't start at the very edge. They start uh, off offset by one, so it goes. So I don't end up using the first row, and then it goes one, two, three, four. On some of the older boards, I know some people had issues getting the buzzer working, but I was happy when I hooked up the buzzer and it just worked. The programmable LEDs on this board are accessed through a four-port plug, and I did not get the cables with this test board. I wasn't able to test those out, but I'm hoping I get the cables and I'll be able to throw on some programmable LEDs at a later date. I did throw on some non-programmable LEDs here uh, that I powered, again, off of the, the power positive and negative terminals of the ESCs. And I'm hoping that they uh, shine through the frame slots there and give it a kind of a cool effect. All right, so the only thing left really is to hook up the VTX and the camera. And I'm going to do that in a way that I can utilize the onboard OSD. All right, so I'm going to run the camera's video out uh, from here, and I'm going to run that into the video in on the Omnibus. Um, I believe that the video in and out um, ports are flip-flopped from the Omnibus F4 uh, standard, the not pro version. So to be careful that you run the camera onto the inside of the board here, and then the VTX video in, run that to the outside of the board, the video out port on the Omnibus. The Dragon Rider Drac adjustable VTX uh, powers the camera, so I didn't bother um, running extra power and ground wires to the camera or to the board. I just went straight from the battery to the VTX and then from the VTX to the camera. Alright, the quad's all buttoned up and ready to be configured in Betaflight.